Today we're going to learn about two special triangles. Not only are they special, but they're also right triangles. You're right. Correct. This can get a little confusing, but I will show you a very algorithmic approach to solving these problems so that it will help to eliminate much of the confusion. So we'll start with a very simple question. Everybody ready? Yeah. One. Okay, little one and one. Good? All right. You good? How far is it from home to second base in a baseball diamond? Uh, 180 feet, right? 100? Wait, Clarification, does everybody understand how a baseball diamond works? Yeah. It is a square on its side where the bottom, one of the vertices is home plate. The other vertices are first, second, and third. Just, I should have included it because I assumed everybody knew, but it's, yes, Pete? 126. Hold on. It's 90 feet from home to first base. It's also 90 feet from first to second, from second to third, and third to home. We're going in a straight line. Always. Straight line from home to second base. Go ahead. What is oh, it? 90 feet. Oh. It's 90 feet from home to first. I want to know how far it is from home to second. Oh. No, it's not 180. You're not running the bases. You're running right from oh, home. Hold on. Oh, I know. Uh, see what happens when you assume things. Here's the baseball diamond. Here's home plate. Here's second base. I would like to know how long is that given that these two distances are 90 feet. Answer? Hold on, don't tell me. Just say yes or no. Yeah, hold on. Let's give everybody a chance. Test question or answer? Hold on. What do you got? 127.3. Anybody else? Yeah. Anybody not have 127.3? Okay, the 126 is an approximation. Mathematically speaking, that's what it is. Okay. But yeah, I think if you talk to most baseball people, they would say buck 26 a second. Oh, we're perfectionists. We're going to go with 127.3 feet. Good, good. That's a picture of me, by the way. I lied. It's not me. No, it is. It really is me. How'd you get to 127.3? Um, I did 90 squared plus 90 squared. So equal to x squared. And I assume in your picture you identified x as being the distance that we're yeah. looking for. You didn't just randomly come up with a variable and slap it in there and then circle in the top. What did you say? 127.3 feet. Okay, good. We're all on the same page, right? Mm -hmm. Good. Well, can you tell me about that triangle? So that triangle that you get when you connect home to second and include the base path from to first. Mark? You get a right triangle. What kind of right triangle? <coughs> special right triangle. What kind of special right triangle? Isosceles, correct. How do you know it's isosceles? Because the two legs are equal. Yeah. The distance from home to first is the same as the distance from first to second, even though the game would be more interesting if they were different distances. It wouldn't be a baseball diamond anymore. It would be a baseball quadrilateral. But it would be fun. 90 feet to first, 120 to second, 150 to third, and 200 to home. <laughs> right? But then we'd let the batter run the bases with the bat and use it. <laughs> so you're coming into first base and you got the bat swinging low. That first baseman's got to decide, am I going to get him out or am I going to take one in the knee? I think to compensate then, the, the, the defenders could throw the ball at the guy to get him out. 
Yeah. No, uh, like, so a, like, like a bean ball, right? Like he's going from second to really third, you just hard. whip it at him. This should be really far apart, too. Like, it should be a mile all the way around oh, the baseball. What if he <laughs> hits the ball? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why, so that it becomes a trade-off. He's got the bat to use as a weapon, no, no. but he can also defend but, uh, himself with the bat. If it was a mile around, then, like, the, the other The ball team travels team faster than a person. Yeah, yeah, you can hit it out. No, the lightsaber. The people are, like, moving in the first star one, who's, like, four stars. You know, if it's a If you're running and they throw the ball, you can just, like, That's a good point. What I would have to think, though, is if, okay, so you're going from second to third, and I whip the ball at you, and you hit it, <laughs> but it goes out of the park. Oh, well, that's a whole Would you get an automatic home run? That's an automatic win. Yeah. yeah. That's an automatic win. Like, but that would be hard to do because you'd have to hit it backwards. Because yeah, I'm not going to. If you just keep hitting it to your teammates, but <laughs> it's all of you like that. I think point. you get an automatic home run, and then you get to take as many bases. Like, so everybody rotates. But if he hits it, an, an outfielder. So like you just get to go around. Then you'd be out. You get to like pick up the base and move it. <laughs> Put it like in the first row of the bleachers. Yeah. 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 All uh, right. Take the plate and hit it with your bat. Okay. That triangle is in fact called the 45-45-90 triangle. Why is it called the 45-45-90? Because the angles are 45, 45 degrees, and 90 degrees. It's kind of a rhetorical question because it's so obvious, but thank you for filling in the gaps. Uh, there are three angles. They are 45, 45, and 90, and as Mark pointed out, they're also known as what kind of triangles other than special? Uh, right triangles. And what kind of right triangles? Isosceles. Isosceles, right triangles. Good. Okay. It's half a square. And so we took that diamond, a.k.a. baseball square slash diamond, and cut it in half, and we get this thing, which we call the general form. That's the general form of a 45-45-90 triangle, and it's muy importante. For those of you that aren't taking Spanish, that's very important. So we have to answer the question. We don't have to do anything. It's America. But uh, one thing I'd like to do is answer the question of where did that guy come from? Now, where the A's come from? Well, I made up the A's. I just I want a general form, not a specific form. So the, the baseball diamond was a specific form, 90, 90, and 127.3. Now I want a general form, so I just call this X and X. The question is, where did A square roots of 2 come from? Are you raising your hand? or Okay. Um, because you would already know that it would be A squared plus A squared, which is equal to 2A squared. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Let's write this down. A squared plus A squared is equal to? 2A squared. Yeah, but let's start with a general form. What do you What do you want to call? Forget we don't, pretend we don't know this. Forget we don't know this. That's bad English. That would mean you did know this. Well, I Forget mean, that you do know. Well, we would know that because of the Pythagorean theorem, so. Right, but we, we're going to solve the Pythagorean theorem to get that. Like so B, what do you want to call that? B. B? Yeah. It's the best you got. Is I give you a free reign and you're just, Z? Yes. In Canada, we would call that Z. My parents call it that also. Are they from Canada? No, they're from Nepal. Would you say a zebra? <laughs> zebra. British people say that. Zebra and aluminium foil. Or zebra. They don't call them a zebra. <laughs> it's a zebra. But if they're talking about zebra, notice. Creep introduced a variable. I labeled where that variable belongs so that it didn't just appear out of anywhere. Okay, back to you. What's a squared plus a squared? Uh, 2a squared. And then when you take the radical of that, you, um, you get a radical 2. Basic rule of algebra, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must also do to the other side of the equation. The square root of z squared is z. z. The square root of a squared is a, a. a but then the square root of radical two, oh, the square root of two is just square root of two because we don't know what that is. Now notice that I moved the a out in front of the radical. That way there's no confusion. Sometimes if, if you were to write it this way, it can get a little confusing if that a is supposed to be underneath it. You'll see some people do this. To show that, that's, I, I don't like, that's Bush League stuff. I move the A out in front. Okay, so that's where the A squared to 2 comes from. And that's the general form. So any 45, 45, 90 triangle, a.k.a. isosceles right triangle, will fit this same form. 
and I'll show you how to use this to solve the problem in a second. Are we good with this before I erase? Yes. Hot diggity. You, again, I, I'm not so sure you guys are solid with your baseball, so I'll draw a picture. Home plate, foul poles. Okay, so the baseball diamond's down here somewhere. You with me? Foul poles are out here, they're at the same distance. For the most part, there are some stadiums that are different. So we're assuming that the distance to the uh, foul poles is the same. It's not always in all parks, but for this it is. And we know that this is 466.7. We want to know how far is this. So let's call it um, alpha. The process for solving these problems is real simple. First thing we're going to do is ask ourselves, what kind of triangle are we dealing with? There's three answers to that question that we care about. One, it's just a plain old right triangle. And in that case, you're screwed because you can't solve it there. Two, well, you can, but never mind. Let's move on. Two, it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which this one is. Or three, it's the second type of triangle, which we'll get to in a second. This is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Question number two, what side do we know? You only have two choices. It's either a leg or it's a hypotenuse. And in this case, I know the hypotenuse length is 466.7. Step three, set this value that you know equal to the value from the general form. So in the general form, the hypotenuse is a squared to two. We set those two things equal. Hypotenuse equal to hypotenuse. Solve for A. I'm going to need a little help here. I can't do that in my head. 466.7 divided by the square root of 2. Does it? Uh, 330. 330 exactly? Point zero? Point zero six. I like it. Uh, those are feet still. 330 feet. Okay. Most of the problems we're going to be doing, though, you won't be using your calculator. You'll see what I, you'll see what I mean in a second. You, don't freak out. It's okay. If you just want to hold it like a friend. That's okay. But you're not going to be using it to do any calculations. Oh, it's more than a friend. I honestly don't know how to feel about that statement, Tom. Is anybody else uncomfortable? A little bit? Like, like, oh. Spring dance is coming up. Take your calculator. Oh, you didn't ask it yet? Give you something creative? We'll see. Okay. All right, second type. So uh, I'll show you the second type. We'll do a couple of examples. And then uh, the last slide will be another synopsis of those steps that I gave you once we, uh, once we deal with this puppy. OK, 30, 60, 90 triangle called the 30, 60, 90 triangle because it has three angles, a 30, a 60, and a 90. We're going to start with an equilateral triangle. What can you tell me about an equilateral triangle? Tessa. Beautiful. All the angles are 60 degrees. What do you know about the sides? Because it's equilateral. Equal, equal, lateral sides. Good. You just answered that question. Have you seen this before? Yes. <laughs> no, not you. <laughs> okay. Same thing as before with the other general form. I'm going to start with a triangle and label the sides A because I want a general form, not a specific form. You with me? Yes. All right. How do I get a 30, 60, 90 triangle out of an, iso or out of an equilateral triangle? I chop it in half. You with me? How big is this? A not the angle, the side. A over 2 or 1 half A, which would you prefer? A over 2. A over 2? Okay. 
da, da. this is a over two. And we need to find that. Uh, what do you what variable do you want to use for that? Z is that you? Well, because we need a variable to solve the problem. We can't just randomly start solving the problem. What variable? Q W. I told you because we need a variable to solve the problem. Why do you keep asking the same question over and over again? What variable? Q. W. W. Why is no love? Yeah, W. It's no love. It's true. That's my last name. Yeah, your last name is W. W gets some love. Jay doesn't. Jay gets love. Yeah. Wow. Jay gets love. Jay doesn't get love. People what about H? Yeah. Uh, yeah, H is I. I feel like I? Okay. I'm, I'm hesitant to use I because I is like what? I only use for imaginary numbers, and I don't want anybody going on that dark path. So I'm going to avoid I. Gamma? Yes. Fishy on its head? I like the Greek letters. We'll do that. Fishy on its head. Notice, different from the. Uh, what's that, a triangle? What does that triangle call, Mark? Uh, isosceles right triangle. Good, isosceles right triangles. They had two legs that were the same and the hypotenuse, so only two distances. This one has three distances. We commonly refer to them as the short leg, opposite the 30 degree angle, the long leg, opposite the 60 degree angle, and you all know my friend, the hypotenuse. Right? All right, little Pythagorean theorem here. A over 2 quantity squared plus fishy on its head squared is equal to A squared. We're solving for gamma here. What's A over 2 quantity squared? A over 4. A squared over 4. Yeah. <coughs> What's a squared minus a squared over 4? 4. No. No, not a so much. Minus what? a squared minus a squared over 4. Okay, good? Perfect. Some people look confused. You want to explain that? Uh, well, it's like you have a. You have a hole, and then you take one fourth out of it, so you have three fourths. Yeah, a over a squared over four is same thing as one fourth a squared. You got one a squared. You subtract one fourth of an a squared from it. You have three fourths of an a squared left. How do I get gamma by itself? Square, square root. Square root of gamma squared is gamma. Uh, oh, that's a mess. Um, we could do a square root of three over two. That was kind of a big jump. I want to make sure everybody's with me there. You got that? Uh, yeah. Sort of. Okay. Square root of a fraction is the same thing as the square root of the numerator over square root of the denominator. The square root of 3a squared, the square root of a squared is a. Uh, so I moved it out in front of it. I don't want to be sloppy. And then the square root of 4 is 2. Which we can rewrite as, just because I know where we're going, we'll rewrite it this way. So I just violated my rules anyways, but that's okay. Square root of 3 over 2 times a which is what gamma equals. So this puppy equals this. Now I don't know about you, but I'm not a big fraction fan. Are you guys? No. No. Is there an easy way to get rid of all those fractions? Yeah. What would that be, right? Multiply by two. You bet. Multiply everything by two. So I would rather have this be the square root of 3, a square root of 3, I'd rather have this be just plain old a, and this would become 2a. We're going to use that for our general form, that way we have to work with fewer fractions. And that would make us all happy. So we get, come on now, there we go, there's the general form for 36. Nothing wrong with the other general form, it's just this one doesn't have fractions, so it's a little bit easier to work with. Okay? 
the two general forms, you probably want to put a box around it, or I should say a rectangle, not a box, or a puffy cloud, maybe some stars, arrows pointing at it, highlight it, color it in, whatever. You're going to be using it a lot. It's important. Should we do some examples? Go. Um, wouldn't we know what that, the top angle is? If yeah, it's own? 30. Yeah, but why do we label 60 and not? Just because I chose to label 60. All right. You just put a 30. This is America. You can label whichever angle you'd like. Okay. So this seems kind of silly starting with these earlier steps, but I'm going to take you through it anyways because then we're eventually going to get a point where we, we don't know what kind of triangle is, so I'm going to ask the question. Number one, what kind of triangle is it? It is a special right triangle, specifically a 30, 60, 90 triangle. <coughs> what side do we know? The short leg, the long leg, or the hypotenuse? Oh, Beautiful. You guys are doing a wonderful job so far. What's the value of the hypotenuse in the general form of the 30, 60, 90 triangle? 2A. Everybody got me on that one? Oh, only one person answered. Armin, you speaking for the group? Is everybody else okay with that? Yes. Okay. Set those two things equal. Two. Set. Oh, it can. <coughs> Set those two things equal. Two a equal to sixteen. A. Do some fancy math. Once we know what a is, then we can plug it back into the other sides. Which one is eight? C a or C b? Good buddy. CA is the shorter leg, so it's 8. How long is CB, Armin, since you're speaking for the group? Um, 3A? Nope. It's not? A. Um, oh, A. In this particular problem, how long is CB, good buddy? Uh, A squared plus CB. No. No. It's about. Eight squared is a three. Done. Because in the general form, the long leg is a squared of three. We know what a is. It's eight. Plug and chug. We're good to go. When you're done, take two seconds to make sure that things make sense. Is the shortest leg the shortest leg? Is the hypotenuse the longest side? This all checks out. I'm happy. Let's move on. Sixteen is the hypotenuse, not the side that was two A. Yeah, the hypotenuse is two A. But two A was. But who knows? I thought you were saying A is in the general form two A. Yeah. But why is it on the hypotenuse instead of? Because the in the general form, it is on the hypotenuse. That's oh, the thought, hypotenuse. Oh, okay. Never mind. I thought it was the other way around. Come on now. What are we doing? Oh, what the? Take a short commercial break here and check these points that for Xbox? out. What's that? Should we take game for Xbox? Chasing the square around the screen? It's an episode, X. Oh, I get an Xbox. Yeah. yeah. What kind of triangle? 30, 60, 90. 30, 60, 90. What side do we know? Short leg, long leg, or hypotenuse? Long leg. Long leg. What's the value of the long leg in the general form? A squared to 3. A squared to 3. A squared to 3 is equal to 16. Solve for A. Not a pretty answer, but we're going to stay with it. I don't want decimal values here. Leave it in that form. Which side is 16 divided by the square root of 3? CA or AB? CA. CA, good. 16 divided by the square root of 3. Now the big question, how long is AB? Tessa? 32 Close, but no cigar. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. <laughs> Let me ask y'all a question. What's 2 over 3 times 5 over 7? Oh. 10 over 10. 
10 over 21. So what's 16 over the square root of 3 times 2? 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1. What's that equal? 32 over square root of 3. A little review on multiplying fractions. Whoops, I did it wrong. What am I doing? Just ignore that stuff there, it's a mess. Question in the back. So you're going to allow radicals on the bottom? Yeah, I've never not allowed it. Oh, okay. That's that's, that's Bush League stuff. Somebody made you rationalize denominators? Yeah. Yeah, when you see that person next time, spit on them. <laughs> Nothing wrong with radicals in the denominator. Okay. No less love in the denominator than in the numerator. It's fine. However, I will say that there will be some problems we'll come across where it will be easier to solve if you do rationalize, but not a requirement. There's nothing wrong with that. You could do 32 radical 3 over 3 if you'd like, but I don't really care. I could work with either one. Okie doke. Got it? it? It seems fairly simple, but when you start throwing all this into the mix, it's going to get a little bit nasty, especially when you have something like that. What chunk of information am I missing? Height. The height. How do I find that height, Ryan? Split the triangle in half. Hot diggity. Split the triangle in half. Keep going, brother. You're on a roll. Uh, Want some help? Yeah. How long is this? That would be 2A, right? How long is that? Oh, 16. How long is that? You were overthinking it. Two A, right? How long is this? Oh. <coughs> no, 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 no. Stop. Take a deep breath. Yeah. Breathe with me. Now, what kind of triangle is that purple triangle? So how long is this? Oh, 12. Atta boy. <laughs> we all knew you could get there. OK. So now it's going to get a little tougher. You good? All right. How long is this? Six. Hot diggity. All right. Here comes the grandpappy of them all. What's the height? No, no working it out. That's the nice thing about this. If you get it, you don't have to work anything out. Hold on. Let's let him struggle for a little bit. Eight and nope. no. Nope. Nope. You do pythagorean nine. theorem and you that, aren't you? No. What are you doing? Is it nine? It's not nine. Not nine. nine. It is not nine. <coughs> hey, <I'm German. laughs> that was German. What do you got? Six seven. Beautiful. Why? So to find the area of this triangle, do you want to find the area of the big triangle or the area of half and multiply by two? Half. half. Okay. So therefore, area is equal to one half base times height. Again, start with the blank formula. One half the base would be six. The height would be six square roots of three. And when I'm <coughs> done. I need to multiply that bad boy by 2 because we are just finding the area of this guy. Well, that's nice. That's going to cancel with that. And we get 36 square roots of 3. Uh, meters squared. That's too much work, right? I don't want to do that ever again. So, uh, yeah, Bill. Um, I have a question. Certainly. So, like, for problems like this, if you know, like, two of the sides, like, 6 and 12, like, you don't use Pythagorean theorem, right? You can, but it's too much work. If you learn the general form, that's a lot easier. You get, okay. boom, 6 squared to 3, <laughs> done. Okay. You don't have to simplify radicals. You don't have to square things. You just, you know, bing, bang, boom, you're done. Okay. In this particular problem, for some reason, we're going to do this a lot. Finding the area of equilateral triangles comes up a lot. 
And so <coughs> instead of going through this hassle every single time, what we can do is be sneaky about it and come up with an equation. So instead of this being 12, let's make this S because that's what we commonly use to refer to the length in a regular polygon is S. That would make this S, that would make this S, and we got a height there. So I'm going to go through the whole process we just went through, but I'm going to use S instead of 12. That makes this distance S divided by 2, that's an S, S divided by 2. And the height of that triangle would then be S divided by 2 times the square root of 3. S divided by 2 times the square root of 3. 3. 3. 3. It'll show up in a second. There it is. Okay. Now, find the area of that triangle. Well, the area of that equilateral triangle would then be 1 half. I'm going to do the whole thing instead of multiplying by 2. The base, which is S, and the height, which is S over 2 times the square root of 3. <coughs> Simplifying that, I get s squared square roots of 3 over 4. Purely a time-saving device. If you don't get that, if you don't remember that, if you can't handle that, then don't use it. It's okay. You're just going to have to find the height of that altitude, find the height of the base, and multiply it using an old-fashioned formula. But we will do this enough that it's worthwhile to learn this formula. s squared square roots of 3 over 4. It pops up all the time. My calculus students still use that formula on a fairly regular basis. But that doesn't mean they can't find it using other methods. Okay? Only equilateral triangles. Summary. Okay? This is what I was talking about. What kind of triangle are you talking about? Now, in step one, if the answer is just a plain old right triangle, then this stuff gets thrown out. You can't use this. This is only for those two types of triangles. Okay, what kind of triangle is it? It's 45, 45, 90, or it's 30, 60, 90. Step two, which side do you know? In a 45, 45, 90, do you know the leg and the or the hypotenuse? In the 30, 60, 90, do you know short leg, long leg, <coughs> or hypotenuse? Set it equal to the value in the general form. Thank you. Solve it, plug and chug. The plug and chug thing means, hold on, relax, relax. Plug and chug means take whatever value you get for A, stick it into the other sides for the general form, <coughs> and you're good to go. Okay? One more? Yes, day two. It's already unlocked. You will be good to go. That's what we're doing tomorrow, but this is exciting enough.